Hi everyone, I am uh, Ken Engoler. Uh, today uh, our class is based on technological change and uh, interdependence in the American economy. This chapter uh, has been taken from uh, Nat Hanover's book of Technology and Culture. It's uh, in 1982. So uh, I want to uh, begin the class by the purpose of today's class. Uh, the main purpose of the class is to understand uh, different components and uh, types of technology. And in addition, uh, we will see how uh, technology in the American uh, economy has evolved in the history. So the primary question here is, uh, what's technology? So uh, any answer for this question? And yes. Uh, usually, historically, the technology is seen as in its narrow meaning, like we see a computer, an uh, iPhone, or uh, those kind of physical stuff as technology. But uh, I will bring a different de definition to technology. For, for me, uh, the technology is a device or an idea that liberates women and that arose the desire for equality among people. So uh, it's a kind of uh, different definition, right? So we will bring uh, discuss in detail when we uh, end the class. So this is a, a primary uh, entry for the class discussion. So uh, here's my outline for the class. First, uh, I will discuss two elements of technology. So we will see what, what they are. Then. Uh, we will discuss uh, historical and contemporary image of technology. So how historical, uh, historically the technology has been seen, but uh, and on the other hand, how today the researchers see the technology. And uh, we will discuss in detail the evolution of technology, which are the complementaries, uh, cumulativeness, and uh, inter-industry relationship. Then uh, we will summarize and uh, conclude our lesson. So. Here is uh, two elements of technology. Uh, usually, researchers, uh, when they discuss the technology, they just uh, talk technology in terms of the public knowledge. Like, uh, a computer can be uh, tradable. When I just uh, make up a computer, I can uh, sell the computer, and the computer is yours. So it's a kind of public knowledge. As long as you pay the price of it, uh, you can use that technology. So uh, this. Uh, public knowledge is potentially public and tradable. tradable. Like when you patent uh, something, it's no more uh, yours, but it's rather it becomes the uh, public. Uh, everyone can reach that uh, public resource. On the other hand, uh, there is also another element of technology which researchers call test knowledge. This test knowledge uh, is non tradable, non tradable expertise that's embodied in organization routines. So uh, if you think about the resource-based view of the firm, so they discuss about how unique, uh, rare, and non-imitable -imit uh, resources you have. And your success is based on uh, these unique uh, capabilities of firms. So tacit knowledge is basically the unique capabilities of firm that can uh, produce unique technologies and that bring different combinations to produce that technology. It uh, lies in the routines of uh, firms, so uh, it's uh, not uh, exactly tradable or uh, you cannot just uh, sell those uh, test knowledge. It's just based on the routines of organization. It only can be uh, learned by uh, interacting with uh, each other or it's embedded in the networks of relationship. You cannot just sell your test knowledge. You have to do it yourself. If you don't have uh, some uh, back information, some uh, knowledge about that particle, particular technology, you cannot uh, just learn it. You have to just interact with the uh, expert of those uh, areas. So uh, this discussion will uh, bring us to the historical image of technology. Uh, historically, uh, the technology has been seen as a small number of inventions like uh, steam engines, cotton jeans, railroads, automobile, penicillins, and uh, etc. And in addition, 
Uh, when uh, we uh, talk about technology, we usually talk about technology in terms of its inventors. So let's say Edison or Nikola Tesla or uh, Andrew Carnegie. So uh, they are just hero in our uh, eyes and uh, we just, when we think about technology, we just directly think in terms of its inventor. Th that person is in, uh, hero in our eyes. But uh, when uh, we think in more complex way, uh, we will see this is not always the case because we should shift our perspective from historical image to contemporary image. The uh, contemporary image of technology sees technology and technological change and uh, it says the technological change occurred at the networks of large technological relationships in which specific inventions are always embedded. Like uh, if we think historically uh, the American economy, uh, without invention of steel, no one could just transport oil from the east part of America to the mid, uh, mid states or the west part of. Uh, if you think, for example, uh, dur dur during the Rockefeller age and Carnegie and uh, J.P. Morgan, all of the technologies uh, was embedded uh, in each other. And uh, basically, when uh, Carnegie just uh, made those uh, steel mills, so uh, only Rockefeller could just uh, transport its oil by those uh, new new made steel uh, railroads and those kind of stuff. So uh, the contemporary image of technology sees technologies um, as embedded uh, in each other. So it improves uh, based on building uh, upon each other. Here, uh, we also uh, talk about the evolution of technology. So it's based on uh, three important uh, sub-teams. Sub the first is uh, uh, complementarities of the, these technologies. Uh, this complementarity of technology can be uh, explained as the productivity and efficiency of a given invention is dependent on the availability of uh, its complementary technologies. Like if we think about the current uh, Apple's products, you can only uh, make use of, for example, uh, iCloud or iPhone or those kind of stuff if you have other Apple products. They just complement each other and without one, the other it just uh, it's a kind of use. For example, you, you cannot just carry on your computer everywhere. Uh, if you have some account, uh, iCloud or those kind of stuff, you can just reach uh, these uh, other products by just your smartphone, it's a small device. Uh, on the other hand, the second uh, <coughs> sub-theme of evolution of technology, it's based on the cumulativeness of technology. Like, uh, for example, if we think historically, from uh, 1870s to 1890s, the efficiency of trains or efficiency of uh, steel mills, it increased almost uh, three, uh, 300 uh, times, uh, 300 percent just in 20 years. So it's based on the cumulativeness of technology. And uh, on the way, usually uh, the cumulativeness of technology uh, is more efficient than the uh, original radical, radical innovation. So uh, the technology accumulates and uh, it's not just that a single invention changed the world, but it is the cumulativeness of technology that uh, brings change into the people's life. And uh, the last one, uh, the last sub team is inter-industry relationship. And uh, an invention in an industry is usually a driver of another invention in another industry. So if we uh, think about, for example, uh, electricity. Electricity just, uh, it's not just light. It was the initially used as uh, light, uh, br bringing light to the house, but then uh, it used in the household chores, it used in the uh, computers, everywhere. So uh, it entirely changed uh, the American economy in today's uh, understanding. So I will uh, bring the discussion to my initial point. Uh, that's how I define the technology. So uh, technology, uh, if we explain the link between uh, technology and liberation, we see the electrification of household chores and the widespread use of social media have enabled 
the liberation of women and the desire for equality. So technology is not just a single device like an iPhone or a computer. Yes, definitely they are technology, but uh, technology is more broad than we usually think. So it's an idea, it's a test knowledge, it's a device. So it, it's everything in our current life. So it liberates women, it just changed the entire world. So you can see the contemporary view of technology, how it changed our life, how it uh, make easier everything, how it uh, liberate women. I think uh, all of the women <laughs> should uh, thank the technology. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, our summary. First, uh, we talked about the two elements of technology. One is public knowledge and the second is test knowledge. Then uh, we continued our discussion by historical and contemporary images of technology. Then uh, we bring the discussion to evolution of technology, its complementarities, cumulativeness, and inter-industry relationship. And this is end of my presentation. Does anyone have questions? So, for your definition of technology, are you saying that women are liberated because they have more time yes. to themselves? Yeah. Okay. This, this uh, statement that technology equals to liberation. It's not equal to liberation, but liberation it is... Helps to liberation. But yes. this is the daily statement because in, an, let's say, in an Orwellian world, mm -hmm. you know, the technology can also be used for suppression. So yes. at the end of the day, it's not the invention in itself, it's how you use it. Yes, definitely. Thank you. <laughs>